Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy Cube, and in this video, I want to show you how you can trace a Power BI report that's hosted in the service. Like, what does that even look like? And why you would want to do this is because sometimes you just want to see either what it's doing. You could be trying to diagnose a problem, maybe trying to figure out latency that's happening, and maybe it's a little slow and you want to try and figure that out. Well, this is a way you can go and do it. And if you call support for help on a Power BI report, they're probably going to go through these steps also. And so this puts you a leg up in terms of getting your issue resolved. All right, enough of all this talking. You know, we like to do it here on Guy in a Cube. Let's do what? Let's head over to my machine. So I am inside of a web browser. In this case, it's Edge. You could do this with Chrome as well. And I'm going to go to developer tools that are here. So you could hit just F12 if you wanted, or you can come down to more tools and hit developer tools. Well, depending on the browser, different shortcut keys for different things, it's going to start tracing automatically. Now, there's other tools you can go do this to. Effectively, it's a network trace, right? You may have heard of Fiddler before. That's a tool you can do it. Wireshark is a popular network trace tool. I'm doing this inside of the browser network tools just because it's easy to use. It's right there. You can export this to a HAR file, open it up inside of Fiddler or another tool and see the same data within those tools. You see that it's collected a lot of stuff. So I'm just going to clear that. And what we want to do is trace a given report. And I want to break down what to actually look for here. So let's go ahead and open up AdventureWorks. So I'm going to hit AdventureWorks. You'll see that the report is coming up. We land on a given page with a visual. I'm going to stop the trace for just a second. And one thing we're going to see is a couple of callouts that will always be there when you open a report. The first thing you're going to see is this conceptual schema. This conceptual schema is whenever we open a report, the first thing it's going to go do is actually go get the actual schema that is representative of the data model. Also, take note here, I'm in the network tab inside of the tools. You may start out in some other spot if you haven't gone there before, but make sure you're on the network tab to see these things. Now let's expand this out a little bit so we can actually see what's going on. And the first thing we'll see here is this headers tab and we'll come through. We can see several things that are important to what we want. One is request ID. So this is the ID that is actually applicable to the given request. Another thing you'll see if we scroll down, you'll see activity ID. So these two IDs are typically used when we want to trace something, especially on the back end. Again, if you ever call support and they need something, really what they're looking for is the request ID and the activity ID. A couple other things we can do here. We can go to the payload tab and you'll actually see items here. We can go to the response tab as well, and we can actually see the items that are listed there. And so this is just a JSON file, right? But this is the actual model itself. So we've got a subcategory table that is an entity, and within there it's got fields or properties within inside of it, right? And so we can actually go through. We've got a geography table, customer table, and we can go through and just see different things about this. The payload I actually really like because you can expand this. Well, not on this one, but on other ones, it's interesting. So you'll go between response and payload as part of it. So conceptual schema is the start of the report load. Then you'll see exploration. And so this is another call that will happen. And then on the response, this is basically the report layout, right? So it indicates the visual containers that are part of this and the configuration of those containers so that the browser can actually display those items with inside of your report. So conceptual schema is the model. Exploration is the report definition itself and how it's going to render that. So then we'll go through and you'll see a bunch of items that may look confusing, but one thing you want to go for here is this query. So the query itself is going to be the actual DAC statement that goes back to the analysis services server that's hosting the model. And so if we go to payload, in this case, the query, it's coming back, it's getting a query in visual, So that's not the query we're looking for. So let's look at this other query down here, and then we'll see that this is the actual semantic query. And so we can expand that and we can actually see. So this is on the request that's going out to the server. And so this is the query that's being sent from the browser and it will go through. We can break this down a little bit. We can see the query. It has a select where it's wanting to get certain measures. So we can see the four measures here and then the column that we're doing in state province. And that's listed here in the visual. So we've got the four measures plus the category for the state. And then the where clause, if we open up the where clause, there's an in condition and the in condition is going to be United States, right? And so you can break this down right in the browser, right? So this is amazing. So if 
you're like me and you like digging into some of these things and how it works, this is pretty exciting. All right, let's continue the journey here. Let's see what the response was. So we got geography, subtotals. So this was the response for that query itself. And we can see the values here. So these are the number values that go through. So that's pretty cool. So let's go down. You may see multiple query lines, depends on the visual. And then the very last thing you're gonna look for is the certified events item. So the certified events, this is the very last call that you will see on the report execution itself. And so this is the actual stats of how long did it take to render? How long did it take to run the DAX queries? The certified events itself, you can dig into this and get a lot of cool information from a debugging perspective. So let's go through and take a look at that. So your payload, coming through. So we'll see two sections. You'll see change report page event, and then you'll see open report events. The open report event you'll only see on the initial report load. Otherwise it'll be blank. And so in this case, you'll see it's an interactive report. It's for adventure works. Here's the browser. You'll see the data set ID where it's located. So in this case, it's on Power BI Premium. You'll see that it's an import mode data set coming from a workspace. So you'll see total DAX query duration took 31. That's in milliseconds. Total visible visual count is one, which we just have the one visual. And then you'll also see visual types and counts. So there's no hidden visuals and we have one pivot table or matrix. You wish it was a pivot table, right? And then under the change report events, you'll see some other breakdowns here. So you'll see DAX query duration. We've got render duration, visual loaded duration. So think of this as like the numbers that you would get if we were doing a performance analyzer trace. You'll see that it succeeded. There were no errors and a couple other metadata points, which is cool. All right. So let's start tracing again ah, and it wiped it out. Let's go back and try this again. I'm going to refresh the page. Some of this may be kept in the session of the browser. And so we got to be careful about that. So let's go ahead and clear this. We'll start it and then let's go into the report. So we'll come in again. We see the end of the certified events. We come up, we can see the conceptual schema and the exploration is the start of the report. And then we've got our query listed inside here. That's what we saw before, right? So now let me go ahead and change the page of the report. So let me go to overview. And then what does that do? Now, one thing you'll see is that here's the certified events, but I didn't see a conceptual schema and an exploration again. Why not? Well, that's because the report's already loaded. I'm just changing the page within the given report. So in the context of where we are, it already has the conceptual schema and it has the exploration metadata of the report itself. So now it's just issuing queries based on the visuals that are being loaded up on the page. And so we can see this by a bunch of the queries because there's multiple visuals on this page. So we'll come down this information icon it means that this is the completed event. And so if we go to one of these queries, come to the header, we can see information here. Again, we can track the request ID, root activity ID. So this is the RAID. That's what binds it all together. And if we look at the payload, this is the query that it sent and then the response that came back from it. And so we'll see a bunch of those for each of the visuals that are listed there. I'm going to stop the trace. And then at the end, we'll see the certified events. And you'll see here that the open report event is empty because we just changed the page of the report. We didn't open a new report. And if we go to change page events, we can come down and we can see that it was the information relative to this page. And so we can come down and see all of these numbers again. So this is just a way we can go through and debug a given report and you can get additional metadata as part of the interaction between the browser and the service to trace things on what's going on with your Power BI report. I always get excited about this kind of stuff. That's the, the bit head inside of me loves this kind of thing. So let me know down in the comments what you think. Have you used this before? Did this blow your mind? Did you learn something new? Let me know. As always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.